I just want to talk about just a horrific funeral that I was at. And it was, it was so difficult for me. And I wasn't sure if I should talk about this on YouTube, but I feel like there are other people that have been through something like this and they say the wrong thing. And I did. And I feel like maybe this will help somebody. All right. Here's the backstory. So I was at another funeral, not the one I'm about to talk about, but a different funeral a few months ago. And I was talking to my husband's aunt. I'll call her my aunt-in-law. Just make things easier. All right. My aunt-in-law was telling me that her grandson, my cousin-in-law's son, wasn't doing well. His cancer returned and he wasn't going to make it. And I burst into tears. I know because I thought that he was beating this and I, this came out of left field and she felt bad because I just started the waterworks and it was just really just embarrassing. Flash forward two months, I'm at this 15 year old's funeral. Yeah. You can imagine how horrific this is, but you know, you have to go, you have to go because you want to be there for the people who love this person and who are mourning and you want to be there for them, but you don't know what to say. All right. So we walk in with my husband and we talk to one of the uncles, again, another cousin-in-law and they're such a nice, kind, supportive family. And I, and, and they try to make things light, I think for everybody. And they were talking about how the family put together a collage of the young man and it was so nice. And, and I was looking at it and they were talking about how the caregivers from the hospital came that day to the, and this was the wake, not the funeral, the wake. I mean, I almost started to lose it right then. So then I said, I, got, I thought to myself, I got to get out of here and, or just go somewhere else. So I said, where's so-and-so? And they, they pointed me in her direction. She's another in-law person. So that, okay, I'll talk to her. And we talked about, we both have only one son and hers is a lot younger. And we commiserated about how the teenage years are coming up. And I, and I talked about, oh, uh, becoming an empty nester. My son's leaving for college. And that kind of got my mind off this. So things were better. But then we went to the line where the, my cousin-in-law, the 15 year old's mother was standing and there's this long line, but now this was late. The wake was almost over and the line was non-existent. We were right there. So normally you would just walk up and you say, I'm so sorry. And you leave, but we were the last ones in line. And she said, I don't remember what she said, but I, I said, your children are beautiful. She has two other children and you were so strong. And she said something like when I said her daughter is beautiful, she said, well, she needs manners lessons from you, Marie. And so I just laughed and she, they're such a kind, supportive family. They, I know she's trying to make it light because she wants people to feel comfortable and it's just a horrible situation for everyone. But then I said, oh, your friend married one of the Bushes and that the Bushes, the anheuser Bush, they're like the the Kennedy's here. And I said, I just read this book, the bitter brew. And, you know, and I said something about, Oh yeah. Um, the people at Sam's in the book or in the book, it says that it, that, uh, this one bush goes to Sam's all the time in his pajamas. I said, is that true? Because I went to Sam's and I asked the lady there and she said, no, no, he comes in and spends all this money, but doesn't wear his pajamas. Something so stupid, but just to get, just to get my mind off of it. And she laughed and she said something about her friend running the house or so. I don't know. Anyway, it was just so uncomfortable and so sad. And I finally, she said, okay, well, thanks for coming. And so he left, but I know I messed up. I know I messed up. And I told a friend of mine the whole thing and she had lost her dad pretty young. And she said, the worst thing that someone said to me was, you'll see someday good will come from this. And she, that was like the worst thing. And she said, no, no good is going to come of this. And she, well, she didn't say that, but she thought that. So, so my point is no matter what, you're not going to say the right thing at a, 
at a wake, at a funeral. And so just say, I'm there for you. If you ever need anything, I'm there for you. And that's what I should have said instead of going off on some tangent. <laughs> but I think when you're uncomfortable, when you don't know what to say, you say the wrong thing. So best to say very little. And don't go at the end of the wake. Go at the beginning so that there is, so you can get it to the front of the line and say something nice to the person, like, I'm there for you. I, I, I'm truly sorry for your loss. And then you can move on. Because I think the more time you spend, the more likely you're going to say something wrong. And we all are. And we're all guilty of this. And it's not lost on me that I go spouting off about manners and mine weren't there that day. So I just hope that my story will help help you if you ever are in this situation because it's horrendous, it's awful. But the fact is that you're you're going there and you're showing your support. And I think that's what the family needs at that moment. So just being there, just your presence is, I think, it's a little bit comforting anyway.